video is one of the many tools in the Wavelength Tech Support Toolbox to help you understand the PLD series of laser diode drivers and how to quickly set one up for your application. The PLD laser diode driver circuitry exists in PCB mount or chassis mount models up to 12.5 amps. The electronics are identical in both. Low current PCB mount up to 6.5 amps with SIP pins, heatsink and fan are included and an evaluation board is available to simplify testing. High current PCB mount up to 12.5 amps with dip pins, heatsink, fan and evaluation board. And chassis mount which allows you to design the heatsink and airflow solutions ideal for your application. It is the most compact package and connects via cables. Single supply operation at 5 volts is possible up to 10 amps. At 5 volts in, 3 volts maximum will be delivered to the laser diode. The PLDs can operate from 4.5 to 30 volts in standard off-the-shelf versions if the load configuration meets the safe operating area criteria. Product variations are available to operate up to 87 volts. For these higher voltages, a second power supply is required. A second power supply is also necessary for the 12.5 amp units. These general purpose laser diode drivers can be wired to drive any configuration of laser diode available. They are widely used for pump lasers or laser diode bars and stacks. These drivers are linear current sources. They deliver the current commanded by the set point. The current source continually monitors the actual output current, compares it to the set point, and adjusts the current if there is a difference between the two signals. The set point is a voltage that represents the output current. This voltage and output current are related by a transfer function that varies by drive or model number. Transfer function details for set point, monitors, and analog input can be found in the datasheet. The set point voltage is adjusted by a potentiometer in the driver or by an external input that sums with the internally generated voltage. Current limit is set by a separate potentiometer in the driver. As a safety feature, when the current limit is reached, the output turns off. To meet CDRH safety requirements, output current switches on 1.5 seconds after the enable signal is applied. Current is initially ramped to the set point over 250 milliseconds. These drivers use the actual laser diode current as feedback in constant current mode, or the actual photodiode current as feedback in constant power mode. Each driver has switches to choose either constant current or constant power mode and the optimal photodiode feedback current range. Please note that these are electrostatic sensitive devices and standard ESD safe handling protocols should be used. All modules except the 12.5 amp have a shorting relay for added ESD protection. See our application note on ESD safety. Before wiring anything, we need to make sure the combination of power supply voltage, output current, and load requirements will not drop too much power across the PLD driver. This cannot exceed 40 watts. Ideally, the power supply voltage will only be 2 volts above the voltage required by the laser diode. A safe operating area calculator is available online. You may also see our video on YouTube that details how to use the SOA calculator. Once a safe power supply voltage has been chosen, necessary equipment includes a plus 5 volt supply, a higher voltage power supply if needed, a test load, and a multimeter. A constant current test load can be as simple as a resistor and diodes in series. Install this in the LD cathode and LD anode pins of the H1 terminal strip. An optional switch tying LD enable to plus 5 volts will make enabling and disabling current easy. To operate from plus 5 volts, connect the power supply to the plus 5 volt and ground positions of terminal strip H1. A purple jumper is visible under the main circuit board that ties plus 5 volts to LD anode. This jumper is not installed on the 12.5 amp models because they require two supplies. For the PCB mount PLD drivers, the jumper is included on the evaluation boards. For our example, we will operate at a higher compliance voltage, so we will remove the jumper. Clip the jumper close to the pads on the circuit board. The control electronics still need plus 5 volts, so connect that power supply to the plus 5 volt and ground positions of terminal strip H1. Connect the higher voltage supply to LD anode and ground on the same terminal strip. 
Make sure the module is attached to a heat sink using thermal paste and airflow across the fins. The multi heat sink high and thermal paste accessories are available to simplify setup. Now we can connect the test load. To minimize noise, keep all cables short and twist the power supply and laser diode cables. For the 12.5 amp models, add a 33 microfarad capacitor across the power supply or PLD input terminals. Shielded monitor cables are included with the chassis mount. Twisted power supply and laser diode cables are available. For safety, rotate both the current limit and set point trim pots 12 turns fully counterclockwise to the off position. Then turn on the power supply. Now we can monitor settings. The first voltage to monitor is the limit current monitor. This will be between 0 and 2.5 volts. Put the common lead of the multimeter on pin 1 of J2 and the positive lead on LMON, pin 2. For the PLD 10kCH, the transfer function is 4.6 amps per volt. For this example, we want to drive a maximum of 8 amps. Rotate the current limit trim pot clockwise until the limit monitor voltage reads 1.74 volts. The output current will turn off if the driver tries to exceed 8 amps. Note that the limit circuit is designed with a small hysteresis. The current trips about 0.2 volts below the setting, so add 0.2 volts to the desired limit voltage. Next, with the power off, set the control mode to constant current. Left position of the switch is constant power mode. Right position is constant current mode. In constant current mode, the photodiode connections are removed from the circuit. The feedback range switch is ignored, so there is no need to ground the photodiode contacts. Now, set up the monitor to read actual current. Move the positive lead of the multimeter to IMON, pin 4 on J2. Enable current by tying LD enable, pin 4 on J3, to plus 5 volts. The green output on LED lights. This transfer function is also 4.6 amps per volt. For this example, we want to operate with a DC current of 4 amps. Rotate the output current trim pot clockwise until the actual current monitor reads 0.87 volts. Note that there is a 20 millivolt bias on the IMON signal. Actual current is slightly less than indicated. To vary the set point with time, you can attach a function generator or a computer controlled data line to the modulation input, analog in. This is pin 5 of connector J3. This input is not TTL compatible. It expects a signal from 0 to 5 volts and sums with the DC set point of the onboard output current trim pot. For this example, the modulation transfer function in constant current mode is 2.3 amps per volt. We want to vary our current from the DC bias of 4 amps to 6.3 amps at 30 hertz. We set our function generator to produce a 1 volt peak to peak signal at 30 hertz. We attach an oscilloscope across the IMON and ground pins to see the variation. The 3 dB bandwidth of the PLD drivers in constant current mode varies from 40 to 120 kilohertz. At these frequencies, the depth of modulation has reduced to 90%. To demonstrate the active current limit latching, let's increase our modulation peak-to-peak -peak signal to trigger the limit of 8 amps. Note that the red current limit LED lights. Output current drops to zero. To clear the latch, decrease the modulation input, disable the enable pin, then re-enable by setting the pin to plus 5 volts again. If you won't be using the analog input, we recommend that you tie this pin to ground to minimize noise. The transfer function of the analog input can be changed by adding resistor divider pair on the input. For details on fine-tuning this and all other module parameters, consult the additional technical information section of the datasheet. Now that we've walked through constant current operation, let's touch on constant power mode. Operationally, you need to move the constant power constant current switch to the left. Two default photodiode current ranges are switch selectable on the PLD driver. Low range works with photodiodes that produce 15 to 500 microamps of current. High range works with photodiodes that produce 50 to 5,000 microamps. Reference the laser diode data sheet for the internal photodiode current. Note that the datasheets often provide only an approximation. For safety, 
We recommend that the first time you wire up the laser diode and photodiode, you operate in high mode until you find out exactly how much photodiode current will be produced by the laser at the desired operating power. Select the desired range. The set point also needs to change. In constant current mode, the set point voltage represents actual laser diode current. In constant power mode, the set point voltage represents the photodiode current. Transfer functions are completely different. For example, if we wanted to operate at a constant power where the photodiode produces 500 microamps, or 0.5 milliamps, we would switch the mode to high, which has a transfer function of 2 milliamps per volt. Our set point would be 0.5 milliamps divided by 2, or 0.25 volts. The analog input transfer function also changes. Instead of monitoring IMON, move the multimeter to PMON and calculate the expected voltage based on the PMON transfer functions. The PLD 12.5 amp models require two power supplies, have no jumper connecting LD anode and plus 5 volts, do not have the shorting relay, must use short twisted cables, and need a 33 microfarad capacitor across the power supply inputs to minimize noise. One of the fun products we've developed can tie one PLD laser diode driver and a single PTC temperature controller to computer control. The USB kit comes with Quick Connect software that allows remote control of both modules. The PLDs are designed to be very flexible. For example, the higher current PLDs can be parallel to drive up to 25 amps. Make sure that the power supply connections are starred. This means separate power lines are run to each controller. Daisy chaining power supply inputs causes ground loops and voltage drops. This applies to all products. They can also be operated from a negative supply to ground the laser diode anode. More information on adaptations is available in the additional technical information section of the datasheet. There are several established product variations to increase compliance voltage, replace trim pots with fixed value resistors, or reduce the cost by eliminating covers and cables. If you need precise, safe, robust laser diode control, the Adaptable PLD series offers many advantages.